Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark with a Mad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 2004 Spanish drama, Live in Made. Hey, thank you. That's that's very generous to you. That's, that's too kind. I appreciate that. Um, Live in Made has a 100% fresh rating from the critics and a 75% fresh rating from the audience on Rotten Tomatoes. And I am reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rating from the critics. Live in Made, uh, the story revolves around two characters. The first character is Biba, who is a, or was, a rich socialite in Argentina. She is used to the finer things in life. She has a very nice house. Um, she makes very good money. She basically has everything you could ever want, including a live-in maid named Dora. Um, now, in, two, in the 2000s, economic catastrophe falls Argentina, and Biba is no longer rich. She no longer has a value, valued source of income, so she ends up trying to sell makeup products, basically, from door to door, sort of like an Avon type thing is what it seems like. Uh, because of the economic crisis, she is no longer able to pay her live-in maid, Dora. Um, now, Dora puts up with this for a while. I think it's like two or three months that she hasn't been paid when the movie starts. And it seems like she's doing this because she likes um, Biba, because she likes taking care of Biba. She likes where she's at. Maybe she even considers Biba a friend of some sort. But Biba, throughout the movie, she's you can tell, definitely tell that she's frustrated with the fact that she no longer has this life that she used to have. Uh, she no longer has the finer things. Now she has to work at this job selling makeup. And she takes a lot of her frustration out on Dora. Um, and I think it's because Dora is really the only person she has in her life. The only close person that she has. So she's really the only person that she feels close enough to to take her frustrations out on. And it's really the only person that she sees throughout her day. Um, she doesn't go out that much. She goes on a bus all the time. Like, she takes a bus everywhere. But she doesn't necessarily talk to anyone while she's on the bus. She doesn't... Um, socialize with anyone. Now, in the beginning of the movie, she does have like this big group of girls that she's with. I think it's the girl she's selling makeup with. Um, and they hang out. They like go to different things, but they don't seem like they're very good friends or very close friends. She even has a party later on uh, at her house. And it seems like all of her other friends are still well-to-do and still rich, and she is not. And I think that causes her even more frustrations than what she had before. Now, I will say that when I watched this movie, the only the only copy I could find to watch was on YouTube, and it was Spanish dubbed, and then I had to translate the Spanish dub into English. So a lot of the captions and a lot of what I saw um, didn't uh, didn't really fit what was going on. So I kind of had to read between the lines with this movie. So hopefully I'm getting the summation of this movie correct, that uh, this is actually what it's about and this is actually what was going on. Now, I felt that Biba really had a close connection to Dora. I felt that she not only thought Dora was her maid, but also was her friend, was her confidant, was someone that she could turn to whenever she needed someone. And I felt that Dora, in a way, felt this as well. But when push comes to shove, Dora needed money. She couldn't live off not getting paid. She had a boyfriend, and her and her boyfriend, it appeared, were building, like, their own house on the side. And he seems like he's a little bit lazy at times. Um, he, he seems like he loves her, but that he's lazy. And she really needs a source of income. So she makes a hard decision towards the end of the movie where she decides to leave Biba and go to an agency to seek another job. Uh, she does find another job at first, but then I think something with it falls through. Um, after she does this, you can tell Biba's depressed. Um, and towards the end of the movie, she does reach out to Dora to try to at least talk to her and be friendly with her. Um, we also learn at the end of the movie, it would seem that Dora's husband is cheating on her with another woman. Uh, Dora finds him and he says that he was just doing a job for her, but it doesn't seem like that's what's happening. It seems like um, Dora's, hus Dora's boyfriend and this other woman are enjoying like a lazy day together and they're not actually working. Um... So at the end of the movie, Dora and Biba are both by themselves. And then Biba decides to go over to Dora's place. And she's going... Biba, 
Biba has to move out of her big house and into a smaller apartment. And all of her furniture won't fit into the small apartment, so she decides she's going to give it all to Dora. So she ends up taking the furniture to Dora's house, and uh, Dora offers to let her stay the night since it's getting late. So it seems like maybe at the end of the movie that these two are going to end up living together again, but they're going to end up living in Dora's house instead of in Biba's fancy house, and it's not going to be a maid-boss relationship. It's going to be a friend a friend to friend relationship, which I think was great. Um, so like I said, I had a bit of trouble with this movie with the translation, but I mean, that's not the movie's fault. That's just me not being able to find a copy in English. Um, but what I was able to decipher from the movie by just watching the actors, uh, act and watching what little cohesive, um, <laughs> cohesive captions that I had. I really liked this movie a lot. I thought it was really, I thought it was a nice, a nice movie. Uh, it, it's not a great film. It's not like a 10 out of 10 best film ever made, but it is It is a, a good movie. I think it really shows, first of all, it really shows um, how hard an economic crisis is, not only to the poor people, but also to the, the people who have money who lose everything. Now, I'm not going to try to just stick up for like rich people here, but she had a quality of life that she was used to that she thought was going to continue forever, and then she lost it. And when she lost it, she was completely lost in life and had no idea where to go or where to turn to. She borrows money from a, a, a guy throughout the movie. I think it was maybe her husband's friend or something, um, but she really has nowhere to go. And she has this one friend who is also her the person she's hired, and she can't pay this person. So it's a real hard situation that she's in. It's a hard situation that both of them are in because you can tell that th there's something there for Dora because she stays so much longer than what she needed to without getting paid. Um, but, you know, push comes to stuff she did, she had to do. Um, and it, I think it really, it really does a great job of explaining um, this situation and what they're trying to accomplish. I um, really love the ending of the movie. I Throughout the entire movie, I thought that there was a friendship going on here. And then at the end of the movie, it pretty much solidifies that. It pretty much tells you that, yes, they are friends and there is more than just what was on the surface. And I really like that dynamic of the movie. Um, I really like that they were able to continue their friendship even after what they had gone through. Because they both went through this together. They both went through this hardship together. Um, so they are going to continue going through whatever hardships come at them through life. And I think that that's a great story. I think it was a great moral at the end of the story. Uh, the acting performances are fantastic. I thought Biba, uh, the actress who played Biba, did a really good job as well as Dora. Um, and yeah, I just I just think it's it's a good movie. Uh, not, not a great movie, but I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you. I hope you join me for my next review, which will be uh, a 1930s movie. So we're going back in time. It's going to be Babyface starring Barbara Stanswick. Thank you. Have a great day.